Over 65 million refugees today, with 12.4 million added in the last year, a number equating to roughly 34,000 people every day. In just the time we have gathered here this evening, nearly 3,000 more individuals will have been forced out of their homes. They will suffer unimaginable trauma as they are torn from the lives they once enjoyed, their futures left in a cloud of uncertainty. Their security is by no means guaranteed. And a return to some small shred of normalcy is a dream that they cannot realize on their own. We're here tonight to ask what can we do in Montreal, across Canada, and around the world to make these 65.3 million people whole again. As someone who was a child during the Bosnia War, I can attest to the trauma of living and fleeing a war, losing your family members, your loved ones, being hungry and cold. One of the most satisfying aspects of this research has been to meet all these children, men and women, to recognize the incredible resilience many of them show in the face of so much suffering and loss, to still find meaning in little things. People I've met would offer me something. Sometimes it would be an apple, sometimes it would be coffee. But what they have offered more is that they have opened their hearts and shared their stories with us. And why? Because they are determined to overcome all the hardship to find a safer life. What we have today is not a refugee crisis. What we have today is a crisis of protection and a crisis of safe passage. If we had safe and legal avenues for people to leave, it's the only way that you're going to stop the actions of human traffickers and smugglers because what we're doing now by forcing people to use illegal ways, we're actually helping to supply the human traffickers and the smugglers who are earning money out of the plight of people forced to leave their homes. What we've seen in, in our experience too is volunteers really being transformed by the whole experience. I think we as people who went on the field have a duty to come back and, and spread what we've seen and trying to change the political and the media perceptions uh, about refugees. You know, I feel a lot of compassion about these issues, but I think that the terms that really resonate for me are solidarity um, and humanity. Just seeing people as people, as human beings, and as people who have who have rights and their rights should be protected and it's about advocating for a change and empowering people to stand up for their rights. Born with cerebral palsy, Nujin has used a wheelchair for mobility her entire life. In 2014, her hometown of Aleppo, Syria, was a center of fierce fighting, forcing her family to flee over the Turkish border. She raised four key points that I believe speak broadly to the refugee experience, and in particular, those facing compounding challenges. First, she says, I am not a number, I am a human being. Second, she reminds us that we did not want to leave. We had to leave. Third, she adds, difference is not dangerous. And finally, she concludes that we need your compassion as much as your shelter.